In a recent interview, Elizabeth Olsen, aka the Scarlet Witch herself, revealed that she has never met Mr. Fantastic. That's right, she's never met the man who she literally shares scenes and dialogue with. And wouldn't you know it, people are mad. Uh huh. So this came at us recently from Vanity Fair, who really got to sit down and talk to Elizabeth Olsen in regards to many aspects of her career, and of course, most recently, with what she did with Fantastic Four. And she was even hooked up to a lie detector test, and they asked her some honest questions, one of them being, has she ever met John Krasinski? Now, obviously, to find a pattern, you have to ask questions that you know are truth and questions that you know are a lie. So naturally, asking her, hey, have you ever met him, could kind of indicate, okay, this is working. Except she said, no, I've never met him, and it was the truth. So how? Well, you know, they never shared scenes together. That's what we learn here, and that's what she reveals. They were never in the same room together. Mr. Fantastic did his scenes, she did her scenes, and then they were put together, and that's it. Now, quite obviously, we look at when this film was shooting, what was happening, the pandemic and everything, shutdowns, how they brought in actors one at a time, kept them away from everybody just to make sure nobody got in trouble or worse, and it makes sense. This is how they shot a bunch of films over the last two years. But people got really mad because Marvel is ruining cinema again with this, I guess, with these hijinks or whatever. And if you didn't know that they never met, if she didn't reveal that they were never in the same room, would you have been able to tell? No. So why get mad? Again, movie making is movie magic. That's what they used to call it. It was magic. They make you believe something that's not real. That's literally what they're doing. Like... Do people literally expect them to just travel through the multiverse to get multiversal scenes for films? Like, you know, I, I just don't get the complaints anymore. Like, you're supposed to be bringing us live action comic books. And that's what they're doing. So, if they're trying to be safe and keep everybody safe, and this is how they had to do that scene, and they only had John for a day, well, they did what they needed to, and they did it how they were going to. The best way possible, the quickest and the safest. To me, that's part of the beauty of movie making, that you don't know what's real and what's fake, and sometimes the thing you thought was real, you were convinced, turns out to be a complete illusion. That's honestly what it's about. Go all the way back to when you saw the film that like redefined what you thought of films. For me, it was Back to the Future, specifically the second one, even though the first one's my favorite. That film changed the way I looked at films. Not because I was like, oh my god. That's all real because I started to, in my head, connect the dots and take apart the scenes and go, how did this happen? That got me into wanting to explore filmmaking a while of film, specifically like the last 15 minutes of Back to the Future 2. So it's kind of like that, you know, it's movie magic. Somebody could see this, this interview and that scene and go, you know what? That did something for me. I want to know how they did that, how they pulled it off. And suddenly their life has changed to like... I think people get too fixated on everything needs to happen at the same time and every actor should have been there together and there should have been this elaborate set that's 10,000 feet, you know, square foot or whatever. No, just let them make the films the way they do. You haven't complained so far. Well, okay. Yes, you have, but no, never mind. Just let them make the films. 